Hello guys, Saint here again with some spe with a special update slash commentary video. You're probably thinking what? Um, you're probably thinking why have you not uploaded in like two or three days, Saint? Well, that's because of two things actually. Um, one would be um, family stuff, you know. You know, I got bros. Then there's gotta be my mom, who I don't want to say much about her because that's kind of private. So yeah, that ha so basically family stuff's reason number one. Reason number two is gonna. Reason number two is because I accidentally got logged out of my account, so I had to like do all this stuff to reset my password, and try to get the code and stuff. So thankfully that's out of the way. So now I have access to my account, so I can start making video content again. So yeah, that's pretty much what I haven't uploaded in two days. Now that we got that out of the way, I like to I like to thank you all for 128 saints. Which is my, which is my saying for subscribers. Get it? Cause Batman intro. My parademons arrive soon. Think I haven't planned for this? Cause you're Batman. Plans are of no use to a dead man. Yeah. All right. Got with that. Begin. So yeah. Uh, thank you guys for 128 saints. Thank you guys all for subscribing to me and watch my comment and and commenting and stuff. Thank you guys for that. We're soon gonna become third street saints and conquer the internet. Or still water if you wanna be real saints real savvy. Anyway, I also wanna discuss what games I will be playing in the future and what games I will not be playing. Let me turn it down a bit so I can actually talk more. So yeah, one of the games I will be playing that is gonna be in this year will be Agents of Mayhem, which is for people who don't know is actually a Saints Row reboot slash spin-off. Which takes place after the Johnny Gap DLC. One of the enemies being the whole universe gets recon and stuff. You just have to check out the DLC for it to make sense. That comes out August 15th, $60. And if you pre order it, you get Johnny Gap as an agent, along with another agent called Lazarus, who is basically female cyborg, but actually kind of looks more human for some reason. And the next game that I'll be playing is going to be Dishonor, Death of the Outsider, which is going to be in September 15th. And that game you're tackling, the, you're obviously going to fight the Outsider, the man responsible for Corvo, for Corvo Atanos, Emily, Caldwin's powers, and Dal's powers. Of course, you're obviously going to be playing as Dal's right-hand woman, Billy Lurk. Oh my god, that is some awesome grog gear. But yeah, you'll be obviously playing as Grod's right hand Grod. Dowd's right hand assassin Billy Lurk, who goes also by Megan Foster, but instead of being marked by the outsider, she's using objects powered by the void, which is how she did all those awesome powers at her E3 trailer, which was just dope. Another game that has piqued my interest and I finally said I'm gonna play it anyway, is Assassin's Creed Origins. You're probably thinking, what do you mean why'd you finally decide to play it? Cause I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of prequels, like at all. I did not like Rogue One, did not like the original Star Wars, n no, no, didn't like the Star Wars prequels, sorry. And you get my idea, I just don't like prequels at all, because to me they kind of feel unnecessary, and have done wrong, they're just plain bad. And, Gr and Grodd is now defeated. Damn, Darkseid's powerful. Dark side wins. So yeah, Assassin's Creed Origins takes place in Egypt, and it's, as the title says, it's the origin of the Assassin's Brotherhood. You're basically this, I think, slave that's escaped from slavery, who's going to assemble the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood to, I believe, find another variation of the Apple of Eden, or another object of power. It's piqued my interest mostly because it's set in Europe, um, not Europe, Egypt. That's kind of like the only reason why I really want to play it. That and the improved combat system, because to me, the combat and like a in the all the previous sets and themes was like really dull. Like it was still cool, but it felt dull and kind of bit. You know, mech combat system. However, it looks like in Origins, the combat has like a Witcher 3 kind of vibe, which is pretty good. Definitely makes the series fresh again. And you know what? I may hate prequels, but who knows? Origins might be the one thing that makes me say, you know what? Maybe a prequel can be good while still being a prequel. 
Omega beams. Oh, really, dark side. Those things are supposed to never miss. So yeah. Our Assassin's Creed Origins comes out October 24th or 25th, and then the. Think you'd be this fast. Dark side will have victory. Well, duh, you're the god of apocalypse. Anyway. So yeah, it comes out October 24th or the 25th. And if you pre-order, you get this special mission arc where you discover the origin of the pyramids, which is just really... I mean, I guess it's Egypt, so they kind of have the excuse, but come on. And then the next game that's in this year is going to be Vampire from the creators of Life is Strange. Vampire, like Assassin's Creed Origins, is a pseudo-open world thing with four districts. It takes place during the Spanish flu era, and you play as this- Oh my god, that's good gear. And you play as this doctor recently turned vampire, and thank god it doesn't look anything like Twilight. Ugh, that's the last thing I need. So yes, yeah, this is actually a serious vampire story, unlike Twilight, which was just crap. And you play as this doctor, who's been recently turned into a vampire, I think like a year ago or something. And, you have, and like Life is Strange, do you choose to embrace your power and use it to better yourself? Or be a pacifist like an Undertale and just try to help as much people as you can with limited power and limited resources? Me, obviously, I'm going to choose like the pure vampire route. You humor dark side. <laughs> dark side. But yeah. You can pretty much either embrace the vampire power to the point where you're basically full supernatural or you can become an actual supernatural doctor and use what, what little power do you have to protect the innocents and allow the spent and cure the Spanish flu. I don't know much about it other than it comes out in November of this year. I don't know when. It's not available for pre-order yet which is kind of a bummer because I was actually wanted to pre-order it. So yeah. So yeah, the stats screen in August. I'm mean, sorry. <laughs> Aliens of Mayhem in August. Dishonored of the Outsider in September. Assassin's Creed in October. Vampire in November. And then there's December, and that's kind of a tricky month because there's not really any new games in December that I know of are coming out. Other than I think Detroit Become Human, which I think comes out at the last day of December. I don't know for sure. I'll have to check the pre-order list. No, I think it comes out 2018. So for December, I think I might do Persona 5 or maybe something else. Aquaman or die. Should I be intimidated? If you have but one shred of intelligence, begin. Okay, that's just mean. Also, that's some ridiculous gear for Aquaman. So yeah, I think Detroit Become Human comes out December 2018 or 2017. I'll have to check to be sure. I think it was 2018. So yeah, once I check on Detroit Become Human, if it comes out 2018, I might play Persona 5 or maybe... Not Horizon Zero Dawn, because it didn't look like good in the comic. kind of looked wonky. I mean, it wasn't as bad as Mass Effect and Drama, but still. I don't think Horizon Zero Dawn would be my type of game. Plus, I suck with arrow characters. That's why I don't really play as like Hanzo or I guess in this game, Green Arrow. So yeah, if Detroit Become, if Detroit Become Human comes out I and... The shark? I grow tired of your prattle. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with Persona 5 though is that it's like, it's a good game, but it's like a hundred hours. I and mean, if you stretch that even to an hour long video, that's not even enough, because then, like, the first boss fight's, like, technically basically the tutorial. The second boss fight gets a little bit more interesting. And then from here on out, it actually starts getting more and more intense, but. I might play Persona 5 if, if uh, Detroit Become Human comes, comes out 2018. Crap, I sound like a broken record. Anyway. And, um. I think that is all I have to say. I feel like I have something more to say. Oh yeah, one last thing. A game that I'm definitely going to get when 2018 hits. 
Far Cry 5. If any of you guys are Far Cry fans and have a PS4, please leave your gamer tag in the comments below. And then maybe if you're a YouTuber, we can like do a. Okay, I don't care. And then maybe we can do like a co collaboration or something like, you know, since it's multiplayer story mode, we can like maybe you can maybe join me on a stream or something. I can like tell you, hey guys, today with me I have blah blah soccer gamer or something like that. Of course, that's if you're a Far Cry fan. If you're not, then then you can just watch me play Far Cry 5. Because, I'm going to be honest, I didn't really like the other Far Cry games. I guess I kind of like 3-ish. Not really, because it kind of was just like crazy Hawaii. The reason why I'm, I'm going to get 5 is because of two things. One, we are fighting a cult, not that's running so from much. one. <coughs> Sucky Outlast 2. <laughs> And second, the main character is customizable, as in we actually get to decide how he or she would look like. And, I've, and if you guys watch my prey walkthrough, I always pick the female one. Why? Because why not? Then I just like playing as a female custom character, because it's just more fun. For some reason, for me anyway. So yeah, if you guys want to do a clever collaboration with me, just leave your gamer tag in the comments below. And then when Far Cry 5 comes out, you can maybe join me as we tackle some missions. Keep in mind, that's if you want to play Far Cry 5 with me. Dark side wins. If not, then I guess we can do like another collaboration or like maybe Overwatch or something and just have like a fun little Overwatch stream where you and me will just work together in a group and just try to fight off these. Whoa. Yeah, that kind of sucks. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to collab, maybe we can like do some Killing Floor or Overwatch. That's really all I got since Far Cry 5 comes out February 27th, 27th, 2018. So that's like a literal year and a month from now. So yeah, that's all I really got to say, actually. Don't care for the intro. <gasps> Ooh, I want that gear. Yeah, but that's all I got to say, really. So... Also, please go check out... Yeah, one more thing. Also, please do check out my Patreon. That really does help, especially because I don't want to say anything, but we're broke. Not like not like broke like we're going to get evicted, but, you know, broken we just don't have the money right now. I'm obviously not saying... You obviously have a right to say no, but I just thought you guys should know. So, yeah, Patreon link's going to be in the comments below. I will also, just to give you a heads up, I am not getting before the storm. You're probably wondering why, it's because of one thing, the time travel mechanic in Life is Strange. By the way, spoilers for Life is Strange if you haven't played it or seen it, but I just find Before the Storm to be completely unnecessary because, well, you have a time travel power in the first season that you used to piece together Chloe's past. I mean, yes, it is going to go more into deep with it, but like I said, I'm not the bigger fan of prequels. Like I said, the only reason why I'm playing even Origins is because of Egypt and the improved combat system. So, there's that. So yeah, Before the Storm, if for anyone who's wondering, it's basically the story of Chloe Price and of what she was doing before Max showed up and began using her time powers to, once again, spoilers, even though I already said that like five minutes ago, she uses her time powers to alter reality and stuff. And, you know... It just feels like an unnecessary prequel, because you give us the ability to time travel, and then you make it, give us the ability to go into her past. Heck, we even discover Chloe's past through the time travel, and even create an alternate timeline for her in an attempt to fix her life. Which doesn't work. For people who've seen the game, you'll know why. So, yeah. Before the Storm, to me, it just seems like fan service like you know they want a life is strange game so we're like hey here's this prequel what's even suckier is that it's made by a different studio so it's not even made by don't nod by the way don't nod actually working on the actual canon sequel that's why they put the prequel <coughs> in a different studio and i'm sorry if i sound quiet it's because like i said my mom's asleep and i don't want to wake her so yeah, the prequel's being worked on by a different studio, and the actual canon sequel is being worked on by Don't Nod, which I don't expect won't come out till like probably late 2018. So yeah, I'm not gonna get Before the Storm, and I might get Minecraft Story Mode Season 2. Be 
because that actually looked like a fun game. Maybe. And that's all I've really got to say, guys. So, yeah, thanks for 128 subscribers, or as I like to call them, Third Street Saints. And thank you guys for, like, checking out this video. I'm sorry that I haven't uploaded in a few days. You know, I was locked out of my account. Now I'm back into it. Just to be clear, I'm talking about my PSN. Not my YouTube. My PSN. And please check out my Twitter account, so that way if I'm miraculously locked out again, we can at least talk to each other on Twitter. My Twitter app will be written in the description. So without further ado, this is Saint. This was Injustice 2 Gods Among Us. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to keep it awesome. Saint out!